But no, man, I, um, I, I'm kind of in a, in a good way and I'm not advocating this to anybody else, but I am a little addicted. There's a ton of fitness influencers out there, but I don't think there's anybody more inspiring than Bill Maeda. I'm guessing you've seen this guy. This is Bill. He's 55 years old. He lives over in Hawaii. He works out every single day. He has over a million Instagram followers and I'm stating the obvious here. He's super fit and incredibly jacked. I actually learned this from this guy that I follow on Instagram. Shout out to Bill Maeda. Bill Maeda is a 54 year old personal trainer and married dad from Hawaii. His unconventional training methods address what's missing in mainstream fitness. Bill Maeda's shredded physique and movement mastery are a testament to his wisdom we're about to absorb. Just so people know, um, my relationship with Katsu, I came to Katsu. I reached out to them first. I reached out to Steven. I have a client. Um, he's a little older than I am. Uh, he's, I believe, 64. So I'm just you, and he, but he's a super smart, you know, Matt, um, Matt yeah. mm -hmm. right? Uh, he's a super, super smart guy. Um, and he has been, he had been using Katsu for a few years. Mm. And when I went over to his house to train with him, I, he said, I, I had all these cool red light and all these, get, like the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory of like cool workout stuff, yeah. right? And one of the first things he wanted to show me were, were these, uh, uh, these, the these B2s, B2 bands, yeah. right? And like, my, cause at the time he said, do you, do you know about blood flow restriction? And I said, oh, is that the thing where you put a tourniquet on your leg and your arm and you just go until your arm is like purple? But he says, no, no, this is different. Mm -hmm. He says, these have computerized pumps that intermittently squeeze your arm off or your leg for that matter. And then they let go and let your arm refill and let all the, and he's, I'm like, why would I want that? What's the difference? Right, he said, right. well, he says, there's a lot of science behind it. He had me try it. And I just started doing some curls. And even when it was on the cycle mode, it was going pressurizing and releasing. Pressurizing. I still got this pump on. I'm like, and there's just something. It felt good. I liked it. And then I did the leg version. And after I messed with it a few times, she could tell I was into it. He said, well, if you like it that much, let me have, I know that guy, Steven Munatone is in he'll, uh, he'll be happy to talk with you. So then I, I re we reached out to mm. Steve. And then that's how I met Steven, you. Yeah, um, he's my because boss. Because I like, yeah, yeah. oh, I like Steven. Oh, he's, the, and I like the product. And um, yeah, so Matt let me kind of just mess with his and use it. And I was just like, I need to have that. And at the time, I just liked it because my joints, my especially my knees, were sore. Right. And right. even when it was in the cycle mode, and so it was squeezing, letting go, squeezing, letting go, it was still doing something to keep blood in my knees so that I could, what usually took me a long time to warm them up was shortened by like three, 70, 80%. Mm. Like let's say if it took me 10 minutes of just any kind of mobility and you know, 90, 90 position, all this stuff. If I put the bands on, just boom, put them up on my upper thigh and just put them on the cycle mode. And I just start doing like my sumo body weight squats right, right. and just tippy toe this. My, my knees, number one, my legs would fill up with, with big pump. Yeah, but um, so right now, you know, I'm okay. I, I have a few dings and things in my uh, knees and this and that, but I don't have like, you know, slap tears and yeah. you know, torn ACLs and things like that, right? I don't, and luckily I've been, I haven't had any surgery on my knees or anything, but while I'm allowing them to recover, what the bands have been really helpful. And I think I posted a video. Yeah, I think just recently I posted a video of this. The easy squats are like the range of motion squat I can or, easily yeah. get down to. It's a half squat or yeah. less. I should be able to, for one minute, do a very easy range of motion. It should almost feel ineffective, but it's something I, can, I know I can do for a minute, easily, without getting tired. The goal is not to get tired. It's just to act. I'm actually trying to take the oxygen that's trapped in my legs 
and I'm trying to, in that 60 seconds, consume it. Do a little hypoxia. And if it's trapped yeah. in there and not really, I'm getting a little hypoxia to produce some of the lactate, lactic acid, some of the hydrogen. But what I think of it as, I think of it like this. When, when the cuffs pressurize my thigh, I've got 60 seconds to produce as much biopharmacology in my leg as okay. I can, like those metabolic byproducts. So then when it releases for 30 seconds, all of that stuff now goes into the rest of me. And I don't know if that's actually true. I believe it is, but who cares? I'm a big fan of the placebo effect. And I do know that whatever I'm accumulating in my legs, it, that certainly feels real. I know there's lactic acid there. And what little I know about this science is that lactic acid is necessary for adaptation and repair. Yeah. Yeah. And it tends and, to be systemic and not, as not well. Not just lactate, so. right? But all those, uh, that other hormonal cascade you get when you go hypoxic in a limb and you're working that limb pretty good. Things like that. Ve Are you talking about endothelial nitric oxide? Yep. Yep. And nitric uh, oxide. Endothelial nitric oxide. But even, even growth hormone. I'm surprised I remember yeah, that word. Yeah. What is it? Mm. Enos endothelial Enox. nitric oxide synthase. Yeah. Right. But you're, you're producing all that, you know, and it's been shown through the studies. Right. That, you know, when you're doing those cycles, when you're dilating that tissue, and relaxing it over mm -hmm. and over, your body produces more yeah. nitric oxide, which helps with yes. elasticity of your entire vascular system. The thing that kind of blew me away when I when, when I met yeah. when I met Dr. Sato, the thing that kind of blew me away was that whole uh, what do they call it the systemic uh, response. So it's it's not just mm. helping out what's going on in your legs or in your arms, but your your perfusion goes up. Right, your heart has to pump harder because oh, they're not yeah. tourniquets, right? Your heart, they're your not. Your heart has to pump to they're, keep the blood not. moving past the band. So we're not, we're not right. so much occluding blood flow. We're just we're pooling blood and we're slowing down that venous return. So as the air bands, right. uh, as they inflate, we're slowing the venous return. We're pooling the blood and we're dilating and stretching mm -hmm. open all that vascular tissue. But that's one of the things I wanted to touch on is, you know, if you notice the comments when I mm. post on my experience with Katsu, um, that the comments are, that can't be good for you at your age. Because a lot of these people know I'm 55, right? And a lot of, they're not a lot, but there are more than a few comments like, are you recommending that for people your age or older? And the thing that, as, like for most of the research that I've read, a lot of it comes from Japan and a lot of it is being done currently mm. and was gathered from people way older than you and right. me. Right. Right. And, and, and I, and so that what my, my answer to them was, okay, as there are two ways to use BFR techniques and technology, especially like Katsu. It was the one, this technology I'm using is actually more directed towards passive utilization, like not in conjunction with exercise necessarily. Right. To right, just right. sit and just, or, or just do mild home activities while the bands intermittently squeeze, release, squeeze, release. I said, so you no, know, these things, I mean, check with your doctor always, but a lot of the research, the meaningful documented research is actually done on older populations, Elderly. not on young right. athletes right. and yeah. So yeah, oldest um, lady he worked with was 104. And uh, the, the, right. the outcomes were, were pretty, uh, pretty impressive, man. Yeah, I, I guess there's this thing called, it, it, it's called sarcopenia and it used to be Com mm -hmm. It used to be considered a medical truth where once you turn, I don't know, 55 or something, your body would lose a percentage of muscle mass every year. And what Dr. Sato right. and his team in Tokyo showed with a 104 year old lady is that's not necessarily mm -hmm. true. This is a way if, right. if you pull blood in the limb and you do very, very easy movements with with cots. Remember, they're not mm -hmm. tourniquets. They're elastic uh, air yeah. bands that move with the limb. 
But when they took the cross-sectional, you know, they do those MRI cross-sectionals of her quad and hammies, and they did a before, mm -hmm. and then four months later, they did an after. You didn't need to measure it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could see it clear as day. Love so that. here's somebody right. at 104 years old that was able to build muscle mass, create some hypertrophy. And if you think about frailty mm -hmm. and what an aging population is most worried about, you know, falls, things right. like that, and recovering from injury, mm -hmm. muscle tone, I'm not talking about, you know, being all big and crazy, but just muscle tone and having some strength as you age is so important. That's really what Katsu is mostly about in Japan. It's just that there's mm -hmm. been all these studies mm -hmm. that have come out and a lot of uh, sports science guys have gotten their hands on it. So now a lot of athletes are using it for a warm-up tool, a recovery tool, a, a, a deloaded program mm -hmm. tool, and they're using it for a lot of other things. But it really is all about the aging uh, population. So guys like me and you that right. are in our mid-50s that are a little bit broken up, it's, it's good, man. Yeah. But no, man, I, um, I, I'm kind of in a, in a good way and I'm not advocating this to anybody mm -hmm. else, but I am a little addicted to having these, either the arm bands or the leg bands. Like I have these things going a good amount. That's cool that just you're using it chores. with day to day activities. I think, I think that's, day -to -day, I think man. that's important, man. I, a lot of people get freaked out about adding something else to their routine, whatever it is. But I, I always say, you know, hey, if you're making coffee, doing dishes, making breakfast, just add this. It's just an augment you know, to what you're already doing anyway, you know. It's strange. They activate me. I feel activated. Like I literally, my arms start feeling kind of pumped just doing dishes. Like I can see the veins in my forearms yeah. popping out and this is kind of cool. Yeah. So it certainly is not a lazy feeling. Um, and then when I take them off, I feel more relaxed. I feel just chill. There you go. There so, you, go. you know, I, and I'm, I'm learning a lot about the Katsu. Like I know about the cycle mode and the passive. And, um, and I think I need to start educating people more about that because, uh, it is, it, it, it's, you know, when you first sent me the bands, I did what you told me to do. I, right. I just literally sat on my couch and I just, whenever I was doing kind of just downtime, sitting around on my phone or my com computer, or whatever, and I just let them do their thing. And that was just really relaxed. I just like that. And then I've just only recently started adding exercise intervals to just increase the hypoxia, mm -hmm. but not heavy loading of my joints or my muscles. The idea is not to get muscularly or metabolically fatigued but I do want to accelerate the hypoxia and the, the, the biochemistry that follows that. And, um, and I really like that. I, I, whew, that, that to me is, yeah, that's Feel, fun. Feels I like good. that a and lot. That, and it's right? a different kind of addicting but in a good way. It kind yeah. of is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. It's been really interesting just to see. And even before I ever knew about blood flow restriction training, I've always looked to me, the art of developing an exercise or of being able to perform it is to see how, what's the least amount of weight that's required to elicit the most dramatic response. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The minimum required that to dosage me, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To me, the minimal effective dose mm -hmm. is always to me, that's the epitome of a well, not just design, but a well executed exercise. Do you feel like with, with Katsu, you're because you're going so light, you're not getting that muscle tearing and that as much of that inflammation, uh, response. I am number one, trying to repair the things that are already slightly injured. And so I'm have no interest in adding muscular micro trauma to that equation right now, because it's nonsensical until my joints are actually properly recovered. I don't want to distract my body from that process by adding to the burden, yeah. the metabolic burden of trying to recover my muscles. So, That's... and I feel like I'm, uh, yeah, so I'm gaining, I use the word gaining the system. I'm putting the bands on when they're, when they're, when they're tight for 60, 
That's 60 seconds for me to produce pharmacology. And then when they let go, then all that stuff goes into the body, new blood enters. And now I'm going to use that blood and make another batch of dope. And then it's right here. And then it opens up, let that batch to go, let new blood come in. And I'm going to make more dope, but I'm not in interested in breaking down anything. I think I'm already broken down enough from years of breaking it down. So I'm just hoping that the biopharmacology will do its thing for me. Right. You know, um, I think it's one of the reasons that Sato is able to work out like he does. I think he's 76 now. You've seen pictures of Sato, right? Absolutely. He's a monster. Oh, but yeah. he doesn't get it's any a... inflammation response. So he doesn't have to rest mm -hmm. those whatever muscle groups he's where he doesn't necessarily have to rest it for two or three days. He can work that same muscle group again the same afternoon or the next morning. I've been using them for three and a half months now. Yeah. And, um, and man, I'm just, I'm constantly experimenting and, and it's, it's just, it's, it's fun. Katsu equipment is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. The statements made in this video have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Please consult with a healthcare professional before starting any new exercise or therapy program. This video is for informational purposes only and does not constitute medical or professional advice. Katsu Global assumes no liability for any actions taken based on the information provided.